Hi, uh, my name is Tiger Donovan. I'm the Associate Head of School of Engineering and Physical Sciences at Harry Watt University in Dubai. And today um, we're here in the Sustainable City and we're going to talk a little bit about the role that engineers have in providing and, uh, uh, a sustainable future for everybody. And there's no better example than the Sustainable City. So come with me as we take a bit of a walk through the Sustainable City. I'll try to point out some of the sustainable features and how engineers can contribute to better design to deliver a sustainable future for everybody. So as we walk through here, hi Alicia, hi. did I pronounce that right? <laughs> so the first thing we notice as we come through the, the entrance to Sustainable City is just how cool it is. And it's designed to be shaded and kept much cooler than it is just outside the walls there. Um, important to Sustainable City is, well, education, right? You know, it is an yeah. example of how we can be sustainable. So to show that off to everybody is really, really important. I mean, it is so cool here. It's lovely, isn't it? Ago, I know. Out there in yeah. the sun and and that. And that doesn't happen by chance, right? That is sustainable engineering design. Yeah. So as we go through here, you'll see, even just by looking on the ground here, they've highlighted the sustainable development goals. This one in particular, number four of the SDGs, the UN SDGs, is number four is the quality education. So important to delivering you know, a sustainable future for everybody. So we're going, about to walk into the main plaza here, and this is the kind of the social center to sustainable city. We'll have a look at the map, but mostly um, there's about a population of about 2,500 here. Oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> 500 villas, I think it is. And uh, they're distributed over five clusters. We'll have a look at that later, but as we come into this social center, it is designed to be, well, quite an active zone, um, a place that's very um, comfortable for outdoor living, even in the hot months of the summer. So as we walk into the main plaza here, again, it's very bright and open and it has this very impressive um, plaza area here. Um, we're going to take a walk down and I'll point out just a couple of the really, you know, the designed uh, sustainable um, features that make this such a comfortable place uh, to, to socialize. <laughs> So there's one person keeping very cool in the, in, in, the, in the sun. So this plaza here is still a lot cooler than what you'd expect if it wasn't here. So as we pan around, um, all of these wind towers are there to catch the air from above and bring it down and into this hollow here. It can pick up a little bit of uh, moisture here, which again drops the ambient temperature by a few degrees. And it generally makes a very um, comfortable place for people to meet, socialize, have a coffee, whatever. So why is that important? I mean, it's, it's, worth, it's interesting, you know, from an engineering design perspective, why is that important? I think it's important because creating communities and centers like this, which are less dependent on perhaps driving your car or going someplace, yeah. this center here is a, is a place where people can come without getting into their cars, you know, they're able yeah. to yeah, socialize. Yeah, no cars around here, which is, which is again, one of the biggest sustainability um, issues or design features of, of the sustainable city. Reducing our reliance on, on well, fossil fuels, right? Yeah. So I think we're able to get into the office now and take a look at uh, an overview of the uh, sustainable city from, well, from on high. So let's scooch through here. So as we enter into the office here, we're going to see a big 3D map, essentially a model of the sustainability from on high. So here is the sustainable city in all its glory. What you'll see are five different clusters, one, two, three, four, five, where the vast majority of people live. There are some apartments down in the main plaza where we are right now as well. A unique feature of sustainable city is this farm here. So this farm, or which has 11 biodomes, is used to um, grow vegetables and grow herbs and things that you know, the community actually use. But what's really good about this is that the water produced from here is essentially uh, recycled water. So the wastewater that we have from all these villas is pumped to the top of the farm here and eventually makes its way down there, getting purified as we go. Another thing that we'll take a look at 
as we go along the tour will be the car parks, essentially. So these are some of the car parks here. So we say it's a car-free city. So when people enter the city, they park up their cars under these hoardings and their um, their shadings, but they are shaded by solar panels. So they're generating all this electricity that will be later used and essentially reduces energy bills in all of these domestic um, dwellings by about 50%. So again, a huge sustainability um, factor. They're integrated into how we live. School here and innovation center also important to um, some of the other factors that really um, help sustainable design, and that is obviously human factors. How, does, how do we in society adapt so that we can all live a little bit more sustainably? Let's talk a bit, a bit more of that as we walk through the rest of the plaza. Let me just do the door. Okay, so uh, we just had an overview there of the, of the city, and now we're gonna walk um, through yeah. to some of the other you know, uh, aspects uh, to sustainable city. One of them I've mentioned already is transport. So if you were to take, say, uh, the fact that so many people can effectively walk around this community, yeah. there's less reliance on, on the car. We have kids on bicycles, people walking places, yeah, are very really active. Nice to see, yeah. It really, uh, uh, buy, I mean, you know, please. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, mean, you don't really see children doing, you know, outside that much, or you don't really see people on bikes yeah. as much. And every time you see a car, <laughs> somebody walking or running or, or pushing a buggy or on a bike, it means they're not burning fuel in their car. They're still getting around the community. They're still socializing. They're still, well, doing it in a very sustainable and less energy intensive way. So we're coming through the, um, the city now. And as we point to the left, you'll see, hey, <laughs> we'll catch that in a second. As we look to the left here, we see Peregrine International School. Now, this is a really cool school because, again, it has this kind of ethos about sustainability. Is and it part of the community? Then? It's part of the city, yeah. yeah. And uh, kids in there learn about sustainability from such a young age. So it's not something they have to adapt to. It's something yeah. that they, when they you know, finish school and maybe come to university, they're already very familiar with uh, sustainability and how sustainability can be achieved without necessarily reducing or compromising quality of life. So if you come with me, we'll just very quickly walk into one of the car parks that I pointed to on the map. Exactly that, right? Oh, so awesome, yeah. as soon as you come home, let's say, into the sustainable city, you'll park your car under these solar panels and you can see they extend the whole way down. This is a little mini power plant, right? It's generating electricity for the community. And what you'll see if you pan across to the right would be some of the electric vehicles from the Renault Twizy down there on the left-hand side to, uh, to these uh, Tesla down here as well. So these, obviously, helping people to be sustainable, yeah. even when they're not necessarily in the sustainable city. And electric vehicles also have a really important role in integrating renewables into, um, into society, right? Because as we know, most renewable energy is intermittent, whether it's wind and the, and the wind doesn't always blow, or if it's sun and the sun doesn't always shine, we still need energy all the time. Yeah. So electric vehicles essentially become battery storage, don't they? So we're able to charge uh, our cars when we have excess of energy and then we can drive or use that energy at a later stage. That's storage true. will be key to the integration of renewables and a sustainable future. So how do the residents move around them? Ah, well, let's take a look at that. <laughs> <laughs> so we go through here and hopefully I'll give you an example of how residents uh, get around. So here's one example of an electric vehicle, it's a golf buggy. So all residents um, have access to an electric vehicle that is charged by these solar panels. So we're gonna hop up now. Hop on to one. On to one, where do you wanna go? Do you go in front? Yeah. And we'll take a, a look around the same city. So if you continue straight down the road here. I mean, the first thing you'll probably notice is how many people are just about enjoying the community. Yeah. It's something that perhaps doesn't happen as much. You know, there's less reliance on going to an air-conditioned mall or, or anything like that. So it's just outdoor living. And it's that, so nice to see so much of community. Yeah. Absolutely. So if we go straight down the road here, straight down, go straight down, yeah. We'll see as we go around, well, what I pointed to earlier, which is part of the um, water purification system. So all the water that's, uh, that comes, that is wastewater from your domestic dwelling is uh, separated into 
well, let's say a gray stream and a, and a black stream, and I won't go into the difference between the two, but suffice to say the gray stream of water is um, easily recycled. It's pumped to the top of the, uh, of the farm where it begins its purification uh, process, and then it finds its way down through the farm uh, as, it's, uh, as it's becoming pure, uh, purified and becoming ready again for uh, potable water. Yeah, and at the same time, that water is then used to, and maybe if we could just stop here, it's then also used for um, growing plants, herbs, spices, that type of thing. So let's take a quick look into one of these domes. I'm hoping it's open. If it's not open, this is going to go bust. Let's take a look. Excellent. You can, come on in. So here's one of the biodomes. I know, the smell is great, isn't it? So you're going to get a lot of basil and a lot of uh, herbs and different spices here. These are free for the, the, um, the community to take and to use. And again, it's a sustainable feature because all of these grew on the waste water that was, and water is so energy intensive. So we need to, as engineers, be aware of, you know, where the energy goes and how we can best use it, how we can best recycle that energy. Uh, as we go. So that's a really good question because this is a really cool environment. It looks like a greenhouse, right? But it's actually much, much cooler than it is outside. And it's through these, if we just take a pan around, it's through these areas here where they drip some water down through and then on the other side where they pull the air through they sort of create this pressure gradient dragging air in through these vents pushing it out there cooling the air down through the water as they go it's a very low energy solution to to, uh, to air conditioning and it keeps this environment perfect for for growing fruit and veg even tomatoes as you can see over here it's cool, but it's not no cool. absolutely which is a really good temp Absolutely. So it works really, really well. Uh, I saw there you were panning into some of the hydroponics. Again, look at this in terms of sustainability. The waste product from, the, from, these, uh, from these fish is obviously used as uh, fertilizer uh, for growing uh, vegetables. Or in this case, I can see some basil there and some lettuce. And you can see how well it's growing in that environment, right? This partly, I mean, essentially it's a closed system. So we put some air through it just to make sure that it, yeah, bubbling up through, keeping those fish alive, obviously. But then obviously uh, the waste product that the fish create, let's yeah. say, uh, is uh, then used essentially as fertilizer to keep all these plants and make them to go really, really well. So let's continue on. It's just, again, just one of the features that are designed into how people live here in Sustainable City. So if we just pan straight down here, you'll see another wind tower there. And that there is in the center of cluster number one. Okay. And what it does, is it drags air down, just as it did in the main plaza, drags air down into the middle of the cluster. Yeah. And there's a little water puddle that's, that's kept uh, wet throughout the, throughout the season. And then air will come down, hit that water puddle and, and go down through the streets, just oh. dropping the temperature in the city, that few degrees to make it a lot more, uh, what would you say, comfortable yeah. um, for, for living. Villas have solar panels? Absolutely, so all villas have. And if we take, can we just pan up? Can we take a quick look at one of the villas from the outside? You'll see on their third floor, on their balcony floor, yeah. there's uh, this shading, right? So um, that creates, again, a nice environment for, to, for kids to be playing or just you know, to socialize. Oh, but yeah. the shading is provided by the panels and uh, that reduces the, um, the energy requirement of the villa uh, by okay. about 50%. Really? Yeah, I know. So it's and it, it's uh, you know when it's doing a dual purpose, it makes it really, really uh, energy and even economically uh, efficient or really economically attractive. Have you been sustainable inside the villas? Ah, there's well, partly that's got to do if we want to hop in. Had to be sustainable. Well, partly it's got to do with education. It's kind of signing up to an ethos, and we drive straight down. So it's it's you know um, if you've decided to live here, I guess you already have a sustainability thing um, yeah. going or you know you're already somewhat aware of it 
And you will find people, you know, they're just that much more conscious about you know, not using, uh, you know, single-use plastics. And, and there's, uh, you know, lots of little initiatives that have happened in the community since its inception, like uh, these, uh, these bags that people make from, from recycled materials that they would bring down to the local shop to do the shopping, then return them. So all of those are little um, uh, environmental or sustainable features that just make people look a little bit more sustainable. So if we look here, on the left hand side, if we just pause there, you'll see this is most people, or all people, here, stop here, um, have, we'll just pop it really quickly, have some separated waste. So every villa will have five different uh, uh, places to put their waste, separating it into paper and cardboard, plastic, general waste, metal and glass, so that it's all ready and able to uh, recycle. I mean, the, the main thing, obviously, in the first instance would be to reduce, but if you can't reduce, then can you recycle? And it just keeps that um, understanding that sustainable, uh, sustainability is really important to everything that we do. Is that even in this weather, there's so much greenery that's still so green. So is, does this have something to do with the recycled water? It certainly has. I mean, so if you were to... You know, you will see a lot of greenery around the UAE, but yeah. sometimes um, perhaps it's not the most sustainable thing to have greenery because, yeah. you're, you know, you have to use uh, water that has been purified for it. If, however, you're using the waste water that otherwise you'd be dumping in the city, then it create you know, you has the double whammy of, of making sure you have this, you know, uh, waste water producing these nice environments for, for people. So you can see the, <clears throat> the water that is wasted, as I said, goes to the top of the cluster, the top of the city up there, yeah. um, into the first initial treatment. And when it's safe, then it's released and it kind of flows down through this river that you'll oh, see here. Okay down to the bottom environment. And that obviously is keeping the water table that little bit higher, meaning that all this grass and all this foliage yeah. is, um, is naturally irrigated yeah. and, uh, <coughs> and creating these really nice environments for, for people to live in. Okay, so um, Febin, yeah. when we're ready, we, we can head next? straight down the way here. And yeah, let's keep going till I say. And while it might seem like a bad thing to leave your car a long way from your villa, that doesn't really happen because these uh, these community has been designed to have these car parks that kind of come into the community where you can drop your car, so you're never too far away from your from your um, from your villa or from your accommodation. That's true too. <laughs> we're not necessarily being as sustainable as we could yeah. be. We should be walking in it. And we will. Uh, we're going to take a, a, a turn in a few minutes and we'll, we'll leave this to its side. But continue down for now, Kevin. So I guess this is a good time to kind of uh, discuss a little bit about the role of, you know, what do engineers do or why study engineering? And it's kind of irrespective of the type of engineering that you want to do, whether that's mechanical, chemical, electrical, um, energy, robotics, any of those, they all have a sustainability part to them, right? So, um, and, and it's not just a part to them, um, it's actually a responsibility now that, that sustainability must be in all design that we do. So if we take a right here. Yeah, and straight the way down to the tower there. It's, so instead of it, if you were interested, for example, in working in sustainability and to try to deliver a more sustainable environment for society for everybody then engineering is a really good option and it's more than just studying uh, sustainability or studying it for because it's part of the curriculum it's it's like a responsibility now for engineers if you're going to design a solution it's yeah. very important that that solution has a sustainability a angle, yeah. yeah absolutely that there that sustainability is is from the core and it's uh it's something that is obviously core to a uh, to all the degree programs in, in Harriet Watt University, we do sustainability and business awareness as you know, core to our curriculum. So okay. I think we can stop here, Fabian. And we'll just pop out <clears throat> and point out another couple of things. Yeah, so as I was saying, it's, it's, it's core to the curriculum. So if we take engineers, if we, you know, what is an engineer? So an engineer is probably a problem solver. That's probably what you're going to say. And most people probably think towards the technical, yeah. you know, the physics or the chemistry and how you apply that science to maybe developing a, a new technology. And true, yes, that's part of what it is. But the modern engineer now is actually more cognizant of external factors. Definitely. So how is the user going to use it? 
you know, uh, how do you create an environment like this that people naturally want to use it in a sustainable way? And also we are entering an age where everyone wants the sustainability aspect absolutely. in almost everything they do. I mean, and that's from, really, the little, from absolutely. the smallest things. Yeah. So if you're going to come up with a sustainable energy design, let's say, yeah. um, it needs to be marketable, right? The, the green economy is, is a market that's out there yeah, now. Exactly. A huge market. And, and, and an engineer that can design sustainably will, will open up new markets and, and, and do that. And as I said, the engineer won't just come up with a tech solution now. They'll have to be cognizant of the market, have to be cognizant of the economics. What's the point in having an excellent solution if that solution isn't economically viable? It won't get off the ground. So those are all the factors that are now influencing more and more what engineers do um, in the future. And that obviously is core to our curriculum like that. So I'll leave you in a couple of minutes now. I just want to point out a couple more things. Here we we are in the center of one of the clusters. It's again a lovely little environment. It means that people can, as you pan around, walk around, come down to a center, have some recreational zones, enjoy the area they have, and then reduce their reliance on public transport even, that's, uh, that's burning fossil fuels, or yeah. reduce their reliance on their cars. And all of that comes together. Uh, and it doesn't happen by chance, right? It is engineers that, that are key to this. engineering in every aspect of this place, and that's Absolutely. the most interesting bit. That, I, I, I couldn't agree more. I, and, and the fact that engineers are working with social scientists to deliver environments that, that are naturally and uh, able to deliver a sustainable future without, um, you know, compromising the quality of life, because the quality of life here, as you've probably seen just by, by panning around here, is quite high. Yeah. So, I think I'll wrap it up at, at that point, unless there's anything else. I'm, I'm really good. I mean, as a final thing, yes. I mean, how important in, would you say is the system? I mean, I know you've said so much about it within this place, but in general, I mean, how important I mean, is so it to it, incorporate Absolutely. So it's, it goes without saying that sustainability is important. Obviously, there's huge challenges of sustainability um, facing us in society today. Yeah. Um, just the idea that we, you know, we need to uh, reduce our carbon footprints in everything we do. Engineers play such a pivotal role in doing that, developing the new technologies, integrating those new technologies and systems, and making them you know, easy for people to use. If we can create an environment, if we can create technology, for example, whether it's robotics or through artificial intelligence or whether it's through mechanical, chemical, electrical, whatever your field of interest, if you can do that, you can maintain high quality of life mm -hmm. in a sustainable way. And th that is the real challenge for engineers of today. So if you're interested at all in engineering, obviously, um, rise to that challenge, see it as a challenge, see it as, a, as, a, as an opportunity to really make a, a lasting impact. And uh, going to wrap it up at that stage. So if you do have any questions about anything we've said today, we're going to be doing more of these podcasts. Leave a message um, below and uh, we'll be happy to uh, get back to you and uh, interact in the future. Anything else? Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Yes, thank you very much for joining us.